Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to vote for a DC character, and like and subscribe for more tape next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Rocket Raccoon, a lab rat that was ripped apart and put back together until it could remember how to feel pain. He's best friends with an indoctrinated murder woman, a widower, a kidnapped orphan, and a best friend who died, leaving him to raise his offspring that also then died. Those Guardians of the Galaxy. So goofy. Oh, yeah. Danger Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need rockets. Guns so big that they can blow up a moon or at least make a big boom. Next, we need raccoon powers, so we've got to be able to get in and out of situations like a Thievius Raccoonus. Finally, we'll get ourselves a jetpack to fly around out of harm's way. You're not exactly the biggest of the bunch. For stats, we're mixing it up. Not the standard point array, but rather a point buy from the player's handbook. The reason is, Rocket is literally a min-maxed raccoon. Crank dexterity and intelligence up to 15. I'd really love to push them higher but there are limits so i guess we'll put wisdom up to 12 for perception constitution at 11 because that'll get rounded up with a racial bonus charisma doesn't need to be negative but you're still kind of a jerk and we'll push strength down to eight because you're still just you know a rat the Dungeon Master's Guide recommends using Halfling for a mouse folk flavoring. Goblins are like Halflings, but they're a little more ill-tempered and nocturnal, so if Halflings are mouse folk, then Goblins are raccoons. You get plus two dexterity and plus one constitution, 60 feet of dark vision, Fury of the Small to add your level in damage to one attack per short rest, as long as you're attacking something medium or bigger. Unfortunately, this means that it won't work on Cosmo the Space Dog, but most of the things that you're fighting should take the extra hit. You also get Nimble Escape, letting you disengage or hide as a bonus action on your turns, letting you get a safe distance away when you need to. For your background, we're going to make our own for acrobatics and perception skills, call it the genetic experiment background. I thought about going for a Simic hybrid like we did with Shadow the Hedgehog, but Goblin just works better. I'll do whatever I want and you can't stop me. Just like you can't stop me from making another artificer, especially when everyone voted for it. Take Arcana and Investigation for your skills of choice from the Artificer list, helping you put together all that good science stuff. You're a magical tinkerer, letting you add a small sensory effect to a non-magical item. Puff of smoke, a pre-recorded message. You can really mix it up and get creative with it. I believe in you. You get spells and cantrips at level 1, unlike most half-casters. Firebolt is a ranged spell attack that deals 1d10 fire damage for a little fun laser blast. And Shocking Grasp is a melee spell attack that deals 1d8 lightning damage and prevents the target from taking reactions, so you can tase Taser Face in his Taser Face. But you're not a regular raccoon. You're barely a raccoon at all anymore. There's nothing like you but you. So get a little modification with Long Strider for 10 extra feet of movement speed for an hour, and jump to triple your jump distance for a minute. We'll get some heavy ordnance in a second, but obviously we need to start off with our mighty mouse abilities. Second level artificers can start making some great gear with infusions to make you and your team a little more cohesive. Enhanced arcane focus gives a spell casting focus, plus one to attack rolls, and you can ignore half cover with your spell attacks. I'm sure standard lasers have some safety features that you can just file off. Repeating Shot makes a ranged weapon magical, adds one to the attack and damage rules, and you'll never run out of ammo or need to reload it, so you can rata the tata, or I guess in your case, zig the zagoon. Enhanced Weapon adds one to the attack and damage rolls of a weapon if you want to share firepower with your buddies, and Enhanced Defense adds one to the AC of a set of armor or a shield. You keep it pretty light, but studded leather will help you get the most out of that dexterity score. But if you really want to bring the blasting power, third level of artificers can choose a specialty, and artillerists get the best gun in the game with an eldritch cannon. With this, you can make a small or tiny turret. I recommend tiny so that you can hold it in your hand and fire it as a bonus action, either making a ranged attack that deals 2d8 force damage and pushes the target back five feet, a flamethrower that forces a dexterity saving throw of eight plus your intelligence modifier and proficiency bonus, dealing 2d8 fire damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed, or to give creatures within 10 feet 1d8 plus your intelligence modifier in temporary HP. You seem like the heavy firepower type, and since it's a bonus, action that means your regular action is available for well other firepower not for the shield spell though that's a reaction it adds five to your ac for that weird bubble thing he uses against ego fourth level artificers get an ability score improvement bump your dexterity and intelligence for better firepower with a magical weapon and better firepower with your fire bolts you can actually get a better firepower option at the 5th level of Artificer thanks to Scorching Ray from the Artillerist list. It fires 3 ranged spell attacks that deal 2d6 fire damage each, and you can even upgrade one of those thanks to the Arcane Firearm from Artillerist, which lets you add 1d8 to the damage of one attack roll per round, as long as it's a spell attack. 
Machines work better when they're fully charged. Who knew? You can also scoop up Levitate to lift a creature 20 feet in the air and move them another 20 feet with your action on follow-up turns. They have to fail a constitution saving throw, but after that, send them up, send them down, and blast them around with your turret as a bonus action when they can't land. What a bunch of jerks. At this point, we've got decent gear. I think we just need to get a little more tricksy. Bouncing over to the rogue will give you an extra skill from the rogue list, like sleight of hand, to pilfer some fancy batteries. You get expertise in two skills of your choice to supercharge that sleight of hand and your arcana skills, letting you add double your proficiency bonus to skill checks with them. You might not be strong, or tough, or charming, or observant, but you're very smart and very crafty. You also get sneak attack, letting you add a d6 to the damage roll of a finesse or ranged weapon when you have advantage on the roll or an ally within five feet of the target. Use a repeating laser crossbow. You've got three tanks on your squad that should be right next to the baddies while you take your pot shots. Second level rogues get cunning action, which isn't actually all that different from being as nimble as a goblin. Basically just lets you dash as a bonus action in addition to disengaging or hiding like you already could. Third level rogues get to choose a roguish archetype and thieves are good at thieving, which kind of makes sense when you think about the name. First, you get second story work, letting you climb walls without extra movement speed and add your dexterity modifier to the distance of your running long jump. You've got fast hands, letting you use an object as a bonus action, letting you use your fancy toys a little bit faster. I mean, your bonus action will probably be occupied with the Eldritch Cannon or running away with cutting action, but there's nothing wrong with having options. Your sneak attack also increases to 2d6 here. Fourth level rogues get an ability score improvement, invest in intelligence to get it on par with your dexterity. Currently, all your best stuff is coming from the big brain. Metaphorically speaking, your head is the size of a baseball. Fifth level rogues get uncanny dodge, letting you reduce damage from incoming attacks as a reaction by half as you dive out of the way. Obviously, just try not to get hit with shield as much as possible, but if you can read the DM's poker face, you might want to just use uncanny dodge. You also get 3d6 sneak attack damage here for some great cheap shots. Sixth level rogues get expertise in two more skills. Acrobatics and investigation would be my picks, but if you want to lean into the trash panda aesthetic, perception would not be a bad pick either. Seventh level rogues get evasion, meaning you take half damage on failed deck saves and no damage on successful ones. You're really confident about making bombs, probably because you know you're not going to be hurt by them. Your sneak attack also bumps up to 4d6. Eighth level rogues get an ability score improvement cap off that intelligence before we bounce back to artificer, which we'll do now. Sixth level artificers get tool expertise, letting you double your proficiency with the tools you're proficient with, so you'll be the best mechanic in the galaxy. You can also learn two more infusions, Gloves of Thievery, give you a plus five to sleight of hand checks. That puts the total at plus 22 by the end of this build, which is pretty sneaky. Boots of Elvenkind give you advantage on stealth checks and make you as quiet as a mouse, or at least a rodent. General Vermin. Incidentally, General Vermin sounds like another guardian of the galaxy from some obscure thing who's like really into military stuff. If you want to do some General Vermin fan art, I would not be upset. Seventh level artificers get Flash of Genius, letting you add your intelligence modifier to an ability check or saving throw of a creature within 30 feet of you as a reaction, an amount of times per day equal to your intelligence modifier. If you're smart enough to know better than most of the dummies on your crew, don't be shy to let them know. Eighth level artificers get another ability score improvement, but will actually grab the resilient feat for dexterity, adding one to the score and giving you proficiency with dexterity saving throws. Wouldn't it be great to just set a grenade off in your hand and not have to worry about it? For that, we will need a grenade, and thankfully ninth level artificers can learn third level spells. Artillerists can even learn fireball, forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 20 foot radius sphere, dealing 8d6 fire damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. Since you've got evasion and a crazy high dex save that you can add your intelligence intelligence modifier too with Flash of Genius, the chances of you singeing your own fur are pretty low. Haste will make that even better, giving you advantage on dexterity saving throws, as well as plus two to your AC, doubled movement speed, and an extra action each turn to attack, dash, disengage, hide, or use an object. You seem to have trouble focusing, but it's probably just because your brain moves so dang quick. Make sure that you don't drop concentration on this spell, though. You'll have to take a round off of actions and reactions. You also get Explosive Cannon, letting you add an extra D8 of damage to your Eldritch Cannon attacks and make it explode to force a dexterity saving throw in a 20-foot radius, dealing 3 D8 force damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. Do you prefer guns or bombs? Now, you don't have to answer that question. You can just say, yeah. 10th level artificers are magical item adepts, meaning that you can have up to four magical items attuned at once, which works pretty well when you get some really fancy infusions at this level. Winged boots give you a flying speed of 30 feet per round, but you can still buff that with haste. It'll let you fly for four hours per day, spending one minute of flight at a minimum. Honestly, your DM isn't gonna track it unless they really wanna make 240 notches in their notes. And hey, 
neither are you. I think it's just there to say you can't fly across an ocean with this. I know that jetpacks are kind of Rocket's main thing, so it's weird that I forgot to get flight until so late in the build, but hey, so did the MCU. Cloak of Protection gives you plus one to your AC and saving throws. It's good, not really in character, but you can only have four infusions at a time. So honestly, at this point, I'd pick Enhanced Arcane Focus, Enhanced Weapon, Winged Boots, and Gloves of Thievery. Enhanced Weapons also go up to plus two at this level, so that's nice. 11th level artificers get a spell storing item, letting you put a spell that takes an action to cast a first or second level into an item, then cast that spell an amount of times equal to double your intelligence modifier, so 10. Other people can also use that and cast the spell using your modifier, so even dumb old Drax can pull the trigger of your laser. Scorching Ray works well for this, especially if you make the item an arcane firearm to give it a bunch of rapid fire fire. Our capstone is the 12th level of artificer for one last ability score improvement. Get that dexterity capped, and I guess throw the other point on strength for slightly better jumping you can fly um i don't know just anything that's odd put it wherever you want now that we've hit level 20 let's figure out how viable this build is first your damage is nice and consistent with a ton of firepower and the ability to use sneak attack and a magical weapon after all that ordinance is spent you're also very mobile with a flying speed and haste pairing together to give your rocket a little bit of speed finally you're loaded with expertise making you very good at solving problems without fighting which is good because actually you know the guardians of the galaxy movies don't have that much violence for weaknesses, you're pretty locked into the fire damage, so things like elementals and fiends could be harder to take down. You've also got pretty low health, somewhere in the 120 range depending on how you rolled, meaning you could be roadkill if you're not careful. Finally, we really min-maxed, so strength, constitution, wisdom, and charisma checks and saves could all be issues. But Flash of Genius basically lets you add 5 to that five times per day, so don't sweat it. Float through the air and climb up your tree, then rain fire like only you can. Just maybe focus on the defense a bit more. You're a heck of a mechanic, but you're a rubbish gardener. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. If you join the Patreon at the $1 tier, you can vote for Red Hood, Swamp Thing, or Lobo. And if you come back on Thursday, you'll get to see episode 200. Unless I don't feel so good, then I might not be ready in time.